The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsofAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsofAnarchy10 for 10% off of the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu gear. We're also brought to you by MMAProfit.com. Play MMA Fantasy free for the chance to win $100. We're also here, available on iTunes and the Stitcher app, the mobile uh, app for any uh, and all smartphones, if you ever want to listen to us on the go. We're back. Me and Chris Shimano, the Katana, we're here. Chris, say what's up. Say it one more time, you kind of cut off. Okay. Like 2 1. No, 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 yeah, just say hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what's up? <laughs> um, man, it's been a couple days removed from our last podcast. This is just going to be a very informal one. I'm just here with the Katana, we're just going to shoot the shit, really. Let's talk about stuff's going on. We'll have a more formal one, I believe, on Tuesday. Following UFC Fight Night 59, Conor McGregor versus Dennis Seaver, which is going down to tomorrow our time, but this podcast won't be up. We'll be going up the day of. So I'm just going to kind of just shoot the shit. First thing that we got to address is the John Jones debacle. Everybody knows the situation. John Jones tested positive for cake, cocaine on a December 4th drug test uh, coming off of the UFC 183 pay-per-view. And um, we find out that the UFC found out about it on the 23rd, literally a week later, said, oh, we're not going to do that test anymore. They wait until two days after the event, to, or, well, they didn't wait. I mean, it was announced because of a, uh, a media member asking for the test, and it became public. The UFC didn't really even say anything about it. They just kind of reacted. And then John Jones, the same day, goes to rehab. Update on that. This is allegedly and apparently because we don't know the facts just yet, but a, 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 according to some sources, including John Jones's mom, he was only in rehab for a day, <laughs> which is kind of silly. And then we just realized, or we uh, we heard today that John Jones is only getting uh, fined twenty five thousand dollars, which is not that much. <laughs> Not when you're John Jones, you know what I mean. First of all, the man made five hundred thousand, uh, <laughs> just for his fight in total. That's not including pay per view points or for us thus far. Another thing that's really ticking us off is we don't even know if he because he was he him him and Daniel Cormier got the fight of the night bonus, and thus far we've not been said told that DC gets that the other half of that money or if it if the other fifty grand goes anywhere else. I don't know. But that's the new uh, thing going on is John Jones has been in rehab for a day, fined $25,000, and it seems like that might just be it, which, oh, <laughs> Chris, your thoughts on this? Uh, well, I mean, they had to do something, and I think a lot of people wanted to see some sort of fine. I mean, yeah, it's not twenty five grand isn't light as far as the grand scheme of things, but if you're John Jones making five hundred like a half a million just to show up, then I mean that that's barely anything. I mean you add that on to fifty grand, he was fined by the commission for the shoving incident and any other uh, fees, take it like uh, management and whatnot. He still doesn't lose that much. Plus, like you mentioned, he still has the fifty grand by the night bonus. I believe. I mean, unless we see a source that says he lost that, yeah. it's just, it makes a lot of people upset that it took this long for them to actually go through with. Well, he did violate the Paul, um, the code of conduct. Blah blah blah. Got five hundred twenty-five grand. He's getting and, fined less than if he would have missed a weight. <laughs> oh, it, it would have been a percentage, right? Yeah, or there would have been a percentage loss. Even if it was only 10 or 15%, the 25000 is still less than that. <laughs> I mean, 10% is 50 grand. 15 is like, what, 75? Yeah. Of that much? Yeah. Seems yeah, yeah. Silly. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, they're really trying to do a PR move to make them, you know, this guy that fell from grace, and now we got to get behind him because he's a drug addict or what have you. Mm -hmm. He's making it really fucking hard. To like him, and I bet you the UFC's pissed. I mean, they would have to be. We're trying really hard to make people like you, asshole. And you're like, <laughs> one day, it just all this other, it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's silly nonsense. It's crazy. <clears throat> I, man, it's just it was hard to get behind him before he got the DWI and all that other shit. You know. Yeah. 
man, it's just... I don't know. There's just so many points to what I hate about this thing. Is that, you know... It's just, it just seems hypocritical in all sense. And I've spoken about this before, you know. I, I don't know why people think I'm crazy for saying that he should have been pulled from the main events. But obviously, from a business standpoint, uh, I see why they didn't. Or didn't just, like, you know, postpone the event. Or, you know, maybe put somebody else in there. Well, eh, the test was found out on December 23rd. So, I mean, I guess with what you could do, it's it's hard to say. But I would just think the morally sound thing to do would have been to take him out of the event. You can't put people doing coke in, in, in a main event fight against a guy <laughs> for a belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't think that's how it should have been handled. But I, I, I especially don't like what they've been saying lately, you know, how they say, uh, you know, it, it's good that we found out about it because now he, you know, uh, he can better his health and da, 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 da. That was a quote. He can better his health. Even though in the same interview, Dana was asked, um, "Why, uh, so like, why didn't you stop him from fighting?" And said, "Oh, because he was healthy." <laughs> yeah, what the? F I mean, obviously he's meaning like as far as physical health as opposed to talking about his mental health. Although I think cocaine does physical damage to you as well. <laughs> you know, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's why it's illegal because it can kill you. Um. I don't know. There's just so many different things to it, man. Especially when it seems very fishy, the fact that it was from a test that when they found out that it was that drug test that they that they um, provide for, for fighters to take, you know? And then they find out it was their drug test that he popped positive for, and then a week later they said, oh, yeah, we're not going to do it anymore. And then they say, we're glad we, that he tested positive. Oh, yeah, we're glad he tested positive for something we're not even going to test people for anymore. <laughs> you silly. Silly. It was just so much silliness throughout this whole entire thing. It's, now you're just going to put 20. It feels like it's 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 worse now to have given him such a silly fine than, than, than already you being under the fire for not punishing him at all. It's like it doesn't make things seem any better me. I don't know. No, especially such a low amount. It, it yeah, I mean, if, if, if this is like to a guy, I think there should be like, you know how there's going to be a tier for fighters that make a certain amount under the Reebok system coming in this summer? Yeah. It should also be the same kind of tier for when you pop positive for a test. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, because like 25000 that's bad for like, say, somebody who's in the prelims. And they're like, oh shit, I should they never do like this. 16,000, they'd be negative fucking 9,000 in the hole. <laughs> no, I mean like somebody who's been around for a while, like maybe, like say Glacian T-Dow or something. Okay, 25 grand, that's, I don't know how much he makes, but I guarantee Oh uh, yeah, say like a Nate Diaz <laughs> would be fucked, right? Well, he makes like 32, I believe, 16, 16. Glacian T-Dow makes more than Nate Diaz, can you believe that? That's another silly thing, but that's... I mean, we can talk about that, but that's just. At the very end, you sign your own contract. That's really all I have to say about that. Yeah, Glacian Tebow got a much better manager than Nate Diaz, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder sometimes if Nate and Nick have the same manager at this point, because Nick is going to make bank. He made bank his last fight, and the fight before that, with Carlos Condit. He made he made tripled he made six figures all of those fights. Oh, I mean, they were both they were both pay per view headliners, and against George and against Condit. That's so. true, but uh, and Nate against Henderson didn't make that much. Didn't make didn't make he's never made six figures in, uh, unless you include fight night bonuses. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, he's got a lot of fight night bonuses, so it's a good thing that he wins those, you know. Because <laughs> he kind of has to. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> if he wasn't, man, he'd be real. He'd be real fucked. And it sucks too, because Nate's surrounded by these guys that make good money, you know, like yeah. Gilbert and Nick and. Just man, that's just bad. But like, but that's when. But as I was saying, you know, like the thing with the twenty-five grand. Like I'm saying, like somebody like midway through the card, veteranized, gets you know better pay. Because there are certain fighters that get way better pay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then they would just be like, "Oh shit, okay, never do this again." You know? That's the thing, man. And yeah, even if it puts them in the negative for what they earned, that should. It's cocaine. 
for that, I think it should be that severe. For steroids, it should be that severe. For weed, I don't think it should be that severe. But that's just, you know, me. I mean, if you want to put weed in the same boat, I don't think you should. But if you need to, I I wouldn't fight it either. You know, I would like, just say you need to treat it all the same fair. It doesn't matter if it's a John Jones. It doesn't matter if it's I like think it should matter if it's an illegal recreational drug <laughs> <laughs> or steroids. I think those are the two worst things that you could pop for. Recreational drugs like cocaine or heroin or meth and uh, – and then, um, and then steroids or TRT or, or or HGH, human growth hormones. That shit that makes people Captain Americas and stuff. Yeah, don't be doing that. <clears throat> but weed, I don't think should do that. I think it's almost nearly proven that it doesn't really benefit you in a fight to really be fucking blazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe it does for a certain person, but for the average human being, I doubt not. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure Nick Diaz could fight while high as fuck. I'm sure. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's just him. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. But yeah, just the whole thing going on with John Jones is just it's silly. When you look at all the points to be made with everything that's going on, <clears throat> you know, guys like Matt Riddle and Jessica I have all been just screwed by the fact that they got you know, tested positive for weed, and it's not even just them. Pat Healy, especially, as we've all talked about. You know, like a person like Jessica I, who can earn a victory, get a contact high, and pops for getting a contact high, and then loses a victory. It's ridiculous, in my opinion, you know? And what it is, I, I still call it victory for her, the biggest one of her career. The one against Sarah Kaufman? Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, uh, at... By by default, that win against Leslie Smith was her most impressive, though. Definitely, she her boxing looked awesome. Oh yeah, no, all her all around striking looked awesome. She incorporated leg kicks in there as well that were just tearing Leslie up, man. She just she looked great in that fight. Did she have a fight lined up? Huh? Does she have a fight lined up? I wonder if she uh, does. Just guy. Just guy. I think so. We could ask her if she listens to this podcast. I'm gonna we're, yeah, I'm gonna send this, her the shit, man. Definitely, if any fighters are listening, please hit us up. We're whores. We'll have you on. You know, <laughs> uh, w one of the things that I love about Jessica I is that you know she didn't let that bother her too much. She didn't come out and slander anybody. She didn't even speak bad about the UFC. She took it like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> Certain people were make excuses and everything. She just came out, formally explained what it was, and uh, left it alone. After that, she didn't bring it up. I'm like, oh, you know, that win, I got screwed. Da 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 da. Sarah Kaufman was man tearing her up on Twitter. Remember that? Oh god, I mean, she was. Why don't you rematch me? Fight me like a woman. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, I enjoy watching Sarah Kaufman fight, but that was kind of silly. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But, you know, as as said, you know, this whole John Jones thing. I, I've you know, for anybody that really needs to get all my points that I've made on it, uh, I, I put a post on. On the MMA discussion Facebook page, that you can go. The date was on um, what's the date, dude? The seventeenth uh, is on yeah. uh, January fifteenth. I put it on at night. So if anybody wants to go and read that, go to our MMA Facebook page. I'll probably put it into an article for SportsOfAnarchy.com as well in a more formal manner. <clears throat> but that's just you know altogether, it's craziness. We'll move on. This is kind of a nonchalant. <laughs> we'll just just move on with it. Um, I mean, we could just talk about the fights coming up. I'm excited uh, about uh, this this uh, upcoming Fox card, man. Johnson versus Alexander Gustafson. Man, uh, first of all, I kind of want to know who you got in that fight. Oh, um, I got Johnson. <laughs> yeah! Yeah. <laughs> My I, man. I, I believe he TKOs. I think he finishes Gustafson, actually. I mean, Gustafson is very hard-chinned, but... I think he takes them. I don't see. I really don't see how he uses. Here's what. Here's here's my thing. And I'll be honest. Uh, for anybody listening, I am a huge Anthony Johnson fan. I have been for quite a few years now. Um, from the Walter Waite days, even the early ones, I've been a huge fan. Um, I think the improvements that Johnson has made have been a, a ridiculously high. I mean, if you look at him three years ago, you look at him now. Totally different fighter. He strikes differently. He fights differently. He he goes in there more 
um, methodical in certain uh, in certain fights where it goes long distances, like say the Arlovsky fight or the Mike Kyle fight, or even the the Phil Davis fight. He you know he he uh, he's more crisp in his striking. He he moves faster. His hand speed has always been fast. His his knockout power has always been there. But he's more technical now. Um, I would say Gustafson is a little more technical than Johnson, but uh, but Johnson's faster. He hits harder. He's probably gonna be he's gonna beat Gustafson to the punch probably. I don't think the reach advantage is that high in this fight. You should, can, can you look that up for me, Chris? What the reach advantage is for both men? Um, uh, let me see here. Yeah. It's seventy-seven Gustafson, seventy-four Johnson. Yeah, not that not that crazy. Um. And I just think that uh, and Johnson, you know, will come out aggressive. He can utilize good wrestling. He's bigger now. His body is more adept for uh, or more adapted. I mean, for light heavyweight. Um, he's built instead of all that instead of all that weight that he was carrying around that was fat, so that he could drop it to make the 170. He's now, you know, to, traded that in for good athletic muscle to have to go in there and be healthy and and have a gas tank and. And fight on for a good few rounds. Man, I think Johnson is just the best that he's ever possibly been. And so I think this version of Johnson is going to go in there. He's going to whoop on Gustafson. And I and I like Gustafson. Nothing against him. I just think that Johnson is going to be ready for this fight. I think that this will be the, the fight that really, that really stamps it for Johnson to go in there. And he gets a title shot off of this one. And God, <laughs> I hope he can somehow... There's some grace find a victory over John Jones. That would be amazing. I know I'm speaking highly too much, but I've been calling it since last year. Hashtag 2015 near the rumble. How do you see that fight going? I know you already made your prediction, but. Um, I see, like you said, the speed factor for Johnson being very surprising for Gustafson. I see him because he's a very confident striker, and I, I, I wouldn't say that. He's an underrated wrestler as far as people don't know about, but people just don't really like to think about his wrestling too much. So I see him outstriking him and beating him to the punch first, but then using his wrestling is more so of a threat, wearing him down with the striking. I think it's going to be like a later TKO, probably like a third or fourth round, yeah. but you see him putting Gustus in the way. It, that's that's uh, next Saturday, right? The 26th? 20... No, no, no. 20... No, 24th. 24th. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up, man. Oh man, and co- well, two podcasts from now or so, we'll do like a. Oh, we might do it on the next one. Or one, on the next two podcasts, we'll preview the entire card, and I'll give more of a formal example as to why I think Johnson wins that. But man, oh, I can't wait. I'm excited for that one. I'm excited for that one more than this this Conor McGregor fight, but I mean, only because the, the rest of the card is not as built like that one is. But it's a Fox card, so. <clears throat> you also have Dan Henderson versus Gegard Mousasi and Phil Davis versus Ryan Bader and uh, yeah, on the Fox card. I'm trying to remember what's that. Like? What's that other fight? There's one more. Corsani versus Cecilia. Cecilia. Yeah, it's no. <laughs> Cecilia. Sam Cecilia. Yeah, like the only Cecilia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of the things that we need to address is MMA Junkie does these rankings, and we uh, we saw that Stipe Miocic is ranked number nine. Well, that's silly, MMA Junkie. You need to get you need to get your shit together. That's pretty bad. I um I remember Overeem being higher than him. I forgot who else was. Oh higher. my god! Was what? Him. Overeem is three and three in the UFC, and I believe Stipe is like six, seven, or eight and two. Obviously, there's eight more people ahead of uh, Stephen. I just forgot in what order exactly. I'm actually yeah. If, if you could, at that right now. If you could talk into the mic a little bit, you're kind of dumbing down your your volume. I don't know if that's you or me. Oh well, uh, how do I sound now? A little better, yeah. Okay. Well, eight is Overeem. Seven's Bigfoot Silva. <laughs> what? Yeah. Bigfoot Silva's above him. 
Six is, I mean, one yeah. through five makes sense. Well, one through six, I should say, makes sense. Six, Barnett, five, Hunt, four, Brown, three, If Virginia. If Stipe's not in it, it doesn't make sense. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Think about that. Uh, so, I think he's higher than Barnett. Barnett hasn't even fought since he got knocked out by Brown. Which was something I was thinking about was, I mean, I know he said he's in no rush to come back for whatever reason. The last thing I remember him doing was uh, he's been doing a lot of he's been doing a lot of Japanese pro wrestling, I believe. I saw he was Dean Lister, right? I believe I so. The, yeah, I believe it was Dean Lister. He cho- he um got in a side choke. Oh yeah, with Metamor is that the Metamorist bout you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in like the last 15 seconds, I believe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man, to submit somebody at after 19 and a half minutes <laughs> of yeah. grappling, heavyweight grappling, that's impressive, especially when it's Dean Lister. But I think also keeping up with Dean Lister, someone uh, submitted him recently too. Really? In an mm-hmm. MMA fight or in a jiu-jitsu match? And it's is re- it really Dean Cornelius. Is D- Man, is Dean Lister falling off or what? Not that know. losing to Barnett says you're falling off, because I mean Barnett's one badass dude. But I don't think it says he's falling off, but it's just surprising to go so Well, because before that he'd never been submitted in like a legitimate competition before. I believe like over ten years. Wasn't yeah, it? something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild, uh, man. I can't remember, but someone just recently submitted him as well. Oh man. Yeah, that's kind of. It throws me off only because of you know Barnett being being busy and active. I wonder why he doesn't want to fight. It seems it kind of seems that way. Yeah. You know, especially because I mean, I mean, it was definitely a hard loss to take. He was very close to a title shot. Um. Oh, uh, well, I don't mean to interrupt you. But like, Barnett. Uh, yeah, he lost to Barnett and then suddenly got hit with a reverse triangle by Keenan Cornelius. Whoa. Yeah. That's insane. Mm-hmm. But back to Barnett, I just, I don't know why he's taking such a long break. Yeah, I don't get it. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, Barnett had a good streak going before losing a round, so it would have been a big victory had he won. He could have been close to a title shot and all that. Um, so, I, I don't understand why guys would take some time off, but that was at the end of 2013, right? So, I mean, he was out all 2014. I don't know. It's kind of of wild, man. I hope he does come back, I mean, because he's not getting any younger. I mean, mean, ultimately, if he wants to just take off from MMA, do his wrestling and do his grappling, more power to him. I mean, I'll support him, but I'd still love to see him fight. Oh, definitely. That's the thing with a lot of fighters, you know. I mean, it should always be up to their discretion. You and me were talking about this yesterday. Where a lot of fighters feel the need to, you know, retire because the fans ask for it or the business asks for it and stuff. Or fans, or I mean, like, start saying, oh, he has no chance. Start believing that they know everything about a fighter. That's the weird thing with um, with this Anderson Silva fight coming up. Dana's coming out and saying that Anderson Silva gets the next title shot if he beats Nick Diaz. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Big no-no, I believe. I don't think that... Yes is a guy that's never fought middleweight, hasn't fought in over a year, a year and a half. Yeah, when's the last time? Yeah, it was like, it was March, it was almost two years. It was March of 2013. Almost two years ago, hasn't fought in that long, has never fought middleweight, isn't ranked at welterweight anymore, isn't ranked at middleweight at all, and he's going to get the title shot over, I mean, no disrespect to Nick Diaz, Mm -hmm. he's going to get a title shot over a guy like Nick Diaz. Yeah, I think I'm wrong. Actually, I think maybe it was last March. Or am I am I tripping? No, I don't think okay. it was that. Re- it doesn't feel like it was that. Re- Let me look. I don't, I don't think I think you're right. I mean, I think it was only been about a year. Yeah. I'm looking it up. No, March of 2013. Oh shit. UFC 158. What in the Oh, that's right, huh? Because last March was Johnny Hendricks and Lawler. I'm tripping, man. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, the, the, he lost to George St. Pierre in March of 2013, so almost two years now. And then a year before that, lost to Carl. He's fighting essentially once a year. I mean, uh, well, 2011 he fought. He was really busy. 
after that. Yeah, man, it's weird. Uh, for him to get for him for Silva to get a title shot off of Diaz after that is just silly. And I think Silva just needs to kind of indulge in in some good fights, like some highlight fights. You know, like Rampage is back in the UFC now. I don't know if anybody is caught in the wind of that, but Ram Quentin Rampage Jackson is signed back with the UFC. That would be an awesome fight. Quentin Rampage Jackson and Anderson Silva, both of these. Okay, let's be real. An Rampage Jackson is back. I don't know what his intentions are being back. But I got to believe that he even he has a sense of like, man, if I really want to fight for the title again, I have to fight these guys that are at the top of their game. And some of them have guys that have already beaten me still. So God knows when I'll even get a title shot. I think that there are some guys that need to be real honest with themselves and say, hey, look, you know, I'm not going to get to that title shot. I had my moment. I was there. Now I'm still got some skill. I could still be in some good fights. I should fight some guys that are in the same boat as me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not saying that Anderson Silva can't uh, get to a title shot someday. I, I'm not disputing that at all. He could fight. Uh, I'm. Who's to say he can't fight Luke Rockhold and, 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 um, and uh, I'm thinking of these names, Yoel Romero or uh, Jacare Souza, and beat them. You know what I mean? He probably could. You know what I mean? Um, but these are guys that have also been working their way up the rankings and uh, and are definitely more deserving than Silva right now, who's lost to the champ twice already. In convincing fashion, I don't care what you say. I mean, De Silva lost all four of the rounds that he was ever involved with with Whiteman. So I don't believe that. There was ever a moment where you can say, oh, well, Silva did this, and he was doing that, and he could have came back. No, there was never that, ever, okay? Even when he put Weidman in that scary-ass Muay Thai clinch, Weidman dropped him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's It doesn't matter. what, what, what no, Everything that happened in that fight, it, it went Weidman's way. So I, I just don't see Silva getting a shot coming off the Diaz fight. If that is exact, I mean, I got to hope that you know, Dana White's kind of exaggerating but it brings to light oh go ahead oh um i mean just looking at these uh rankings right now these lists yeah thinking of fighters that more than likely you know their title hopes are kind of fading um this could be a bad i don't know i don't know what you think about this i don't know what other people think about this certainly not a bad fighter certainly constantly in the top three but i mean losing to Henan Burrow twice, losing to Dominic Cruz, and then more than likely not wanting to fight TJ Dillashaw, you're right, favor. Could be a guy that jumps between 35 and 45 just having fun fights. I, that's what I think he should do. I mean, every time every time a belt comes near him, it's like kryptonite. It does, he just can't, yeah, he can't get it going. It's weird. Um, <laughs> and he, he's definitely one of those guys. I mean, his pay-per-view, even though he stepped out on short notice with, with Hen and Burrell, did all right. Um, and it's strictly because of it's Faber. You know, I'm here, I live here in California, and so I know that, you know, when Faber fight is on, a lot of people are like, whoa, the California kid's fighting, that's crazy, okay, let's watch, you know. Um, this state goes a little nuts whenever he fights. Um, it's obviously, it's just the state, but it's definitely enough to kind of help back the numbers up a little on pay-per-views. So, he's a guy that really can sell. Um, especially, in, in, you know, him coming out with this thing where he likes to fight at the top of prelims because it sells good for, um, for you know, or not sells good, but, like, it, it gets a lot of viewership because it's him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I just, I don't know. It, it's it, That's another, I mean, there are guys, if we go through all divisions, could, you know, their time is probably past of fighting for a belt. Now... Dana and the fans and the UFC has this stigma of where fighters in the UFC, if they're not fighting for a belt, then they shouldn't be fighting. And I don't think that always needs to be the case. I really don't. I think there are certain, like, like every time a, a, a fighter is getting a little older, get loses a fight, and then they say, oh, he needs to retire now. I never have ever once said that. I've never said this fighter needs to retire. I think I only said it about Chuck Liddell. And I didn't say it like he needs to. I said he's probably going to. Probably should. You know, that one was the only one that made the most sense. Um, I'd like to clarify that we are very open and understanding of a fighter needs to retire, of course, for fucking medical reasons. Yeah, I was about to get to that. Like, if a, if a doctor sits a fighter down and says, look, dude, um, I'm looking at your head right here. 
There's a lot of fucked up shit going on in there. <laughs> you need to not get hit in the face anymore. If a, if a fighter came out and said that, and some have, like, they're, but n- not ones that were in it for too long for some reason, but um, fighters that have come out and said, yeah, I, my doctor's telling me this, that, and I need to get out, do it, definitely. I'm, sa- I'm talking about the fighters that, like, Junior Dos Santos is a perfect example. Junior Dos Santos has only been fighting, I think, nine years, at, years. At, like, at most nine years, which for certain fighters, yeah, it's a while. But he's a young dude. He's still, like, what, 30? 30, 31. 30, 31. He's not that old. But because, you know, the, of the fights with Kane and his last fight, which he won against Stipe Miocic, um, people were saying, yeah, he needs to retire. And I'm like, he won the fight. Guys are going to win fights and look like shit at the end of fights. It doesn't mean they need to retire just because they, they, they swell up easy. I mean, yeah, it was a heavyweight fight, but whatever, whatever, whatever you didn't expect. You know what I mean? If a doctor sits him down and says, hey, look. Yeah, look at your face. It's starting to morph into an anamorph-looking thing, and you need to not fight anymore. That's one thing. And then then he can retire. Then I understand. But even Junior is saying, I'm fine. I don't know why you guys are tripping. I, guys need to, you know, just it, when, when a fighter comes off of a fight looking like a mess, that's the risk that they have going into a fight anyway. Why they need to be told, oh yeah, he should retire after, you know, a few bad losses and, and even a, even a, even a even an ugly win, you know what I mean? Doesn't mean they need to retire. And I and I'm and that's just speaking about Junior. Junior is still very much a contender in his division, though it, it's hard to see him getting a title shot soon as long as Kane is the champion. So guys like that, I think they should just indulge in really really money maker fights. You know what I mean? Like Junior Dos Santos, Alistair Overeem, that could headline a Fox card. You know what I mean? Or a Fight Night card, or be like a co-main in a pay per view. You know what I mean? Um. There, there are guys across every division that have been there a while and just, you know, have fallen off and maybe can't ever get to that title shot again. Um, I, if you look at every division, maybe except for the women's division and the and the flyweight division, but um, every other division that's been established with certain champions, you know, should should you know, they they can. There's more to just fighting for the title. There are many boxers that fought and did big money fights, you know, just to make the money. Because that's the good thing for fighters. I want fighters to go out there, fight, and make their money. Donald Cerrone came out with this interview coming up before this fight that he's that uh, against Benson Henderson, where he's saying, you know, the title isn't everything here. It's not. For some fighters, it can, it can be just about going in there, uh, making money, especially if you love to do it. You know, and I got to believe that a lot of fighters... Yeah, the belt is 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 the bucket list kicker that why they're in the sport and everything. But I'm sure that f- having the fun fights is definitely another uh, you know, just being in there, being a fighter because you love it, you love doing it, you make money off of it. That's another reason for being it. You know what I mean? And um Donald credits his his newfound success as of late as to not caring too much about the title and just worrying about the fight, worrying about the fights, worrying about putting on a good performance, being good, going up, showing up. Being the best fighter that he can be, no matter what's on the line, you know what I mean, and um, that's commendable. And what I think about guys like Anderson Silva or Rampage or Shogun um, or even Little Nog, guys who just you you see them and you think there's just no way that they'll make it to the belt, and not because they're not that good anymore. Well, that's part of it, but only because you know it just seems like the sport is evolving. Uh, ever so drastically now more so than it has been like say five years ago where you were getting like hints and pieces of it now it just seems like there are so many up-and-comers now and 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 the sport's just changing but their name has some value they could go out like silva could fight hua and man that'd be a great fight right oh yeah for sure like that'd be i mean i know I, they both said they wouldn't which is kind of lame but the fact that they're coaching against each other but not fighting each other in the end lame yeah. lame I hope Shogun accidentally says something in English that pisses off Silva, and then they just say, okay, we're fighting. Okay. <laughs> On the show, you just see him slip something in English, and he's like, hey, 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 what? <laughs> no. He's like, I didn't say that right. I said, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone does that thing where they say something that in English that means something else, you know? <laughs> now, if he does, Anderson Silva does tough Brazil, that'd be kind of weird. So, like, let's say he wins and he's going to fight Weidman next, but not coach against Weidman, but coach against Shogun, 
but at the same time market his fight for anything. See, that's a lot of wackiness going on. You yeah, can't. exactly. So that's why, that's another thing. I mean, I think it's more so Dana just saying shit to say shit. I really, I don't think they would really allow yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean. Having multiple fights to really get there. But for every fighter that's out there that's veteranized, that, you know, is still, that still feels like they have a lot to offer, man, you don't always have to fight for the title. It, it doesn't always have to be that way. The reason why I understand why retirement is such a hard thing, my father was a professional boxer. And I remember just sitting down with him one time and we're discussing, like, you know, so why did you decide to retire? Or when did you do that? Midway through it, man, he just starts crying on me, which I've never seen my dad do. You know, because <laughs> my dad, being the boxer and the hard ass that he is, being from another country, things being different, um, it's just wow. I could just see it that this is like a, a tough thing to deal with, you know, um, to to have to come to terms with, you know, you're you're not the best in the world anymore, or you're not as good as you used to be, or you're not, you know, um, you you you're just falling off to a degree. Um, I, when fighters are faced with being like being told by fans or promoters. Or, you know, that they need to retire. It just, it's hard. And I, you can see it from BJ Penn that it was hard. Now, that's a crazy cool thing, too, is that, like, I don't think BJ Penn, maybe after that, maybe after that performance, if when he fought Frankie Edgar, if he was going to fight all of his fights like that, then, yeah, he should retire. But I didn't, but BJ Penn could have, after that fight, said, look, I'm just going to go up to lightweight. I just want to have some big fights. I just want to make some fights. Like fought Torkin Origami in a rematch or something. Or fought like Nate Diaz since Nate Diaz is another guy who it'll be a while before you ever see that guy fight for a title again, if ever. You know? I, I just I feel like there are certain fighters, you look at them and you think, okay, I'm, I'm pretty far from a title shot. But I could just ask for these big money fights, fight a big name and, you know, uh, make, an, you know make some money. There's never anything wrong with that. I don't think that those that this, I mean Bellator seems to think that that's kind of the way to go moving forward. You know, making Tito and Bonner and, and you know Tito and Rampage and all that stuff. You know, it, it it doesn't mean that the UFC is diminished in any way when you make a fight like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it, that's actually something that Ben Askren pointed out in the infamous interview where Kenny Rice cut him off and got rid of him. Is that at the end of the day, if I'm making my money. And I'm just simply competing over here, having like you know, making my hundred grand or what have you. But I'm getting more to compete over here. Isn't that still a successful career? And exactly. I say, yeah, sure. I mean, like, just because one, you're not a, you're not fighting in what's considered the best organization, or b, you are, but you're not fighting for the title anymore. You're simply putting on the fun fights, a Silva Diaz fight, any sort of fights like that. Doesn't mean you're not still having a successful career. Yeah, especially. I mean, you could be you could be the best plumber in a city, and then another city over has never heard of you, but you've made all this money. It doesn't mean you're not a successful plumber, right? That's just, that's the silly thing that people need to realize is that just not everybody that's fought for the UFC, like Fedor, there's no. I mean, even mind his success, guarantee you that dude's made a lot of fucking money fighting. Oh lord, I can't even imagine. I mean, if Tim Sylvia got paid three quarters of a million to fight him, I can't imagine. What, what? Hey. he did. Yeah, I'm dead serious. He got paid 750 grand. To fight Fedor? Yeah. <laughs> Affliction. Holy shit. You guys were... Where did they get all that money? I don't know. I mean, I know Affliction is a successful brand. It's not anymore, but it used to be. <laughs> so I'm just thinking like, whoa, where did you get the money to do all that? A real quick update. Um... Dana White, Dana just announced a few fights for 186, which is going to go down. At the Dude, Center. lay him out. Dillashaw Barrow is maining. Bakers. Lombard McDonald actually still went through. That means um, either right. Robbie's going to be fighting someone else. We'll I talk about that welterweight title picture, definitely. Yeah, but either that or Lawler's taking off, taking time off, which... Give him all the time he wants because he fucking took a few back to back to back. Oh, dude, plays. yeah, what a busy year that dude had. Rampage versus Fabio Maldonado. Woo! There it is. Yeah. Rampage is back. See, Bisping. okay, but that's the thing right here. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that more. Too. Go ahead. Oh, Bisping versus CB Dalloway. Pretty interesting fight. <laughs> oh man. All right, well. And Cote versus Riggs. Joe Riggs. Yeah. Oh. 
as them the only rigs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good fight. I like that. Um, see, the the thing about Rampage coming back, that's a good fight to give him. That's a winnable fight for Rampage. Um, and so, like, say he comes back, he wins. Put that dude in the main event of a box card with Anderson Silva. Man, can you imagine the bucks that both men will get, the UFC will get, and just I, they, they, I don't, they don't need to. I mean, they already switch their shit up and down all the time, anyway. As far as like, you know, what it is the UFC has a, as far as standards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't see why fight like you know, like, as I was saying, I was referring to BJ Penn. The guy could have gone up to lightweight, you know, and or and, and just, you know, said, I'm just going to do these big money fights, fight on the top of cars, fight night cards, like go me, make my money, da da da. I mean, if it's a real thing where the guy just didn't want to fight anymore, that's definitely, yeah, leave the game. It's fine. I mean, at the end of the day, your heart and yourself, you'd be 100% in this. Oh, definitely. And, and if they weren't, then yeah, he shouldn't fight. I, I'm speaking specifically about fighters that still want to fight. That still have something to give. That still want to make money. They don't have to fight for the belt. That's the thing. I'm talking specifically about those fighters. They're healthy. They're good to go. They're committed. They want to fight still. They still have something to give. Guys like Kimbo Slice, God bless his heart. Guy still wants to fight. Let him fight. Nothing wrong with him coming back to Bellator and wanting to make some money and fight and stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, you know, and uh, especially because Bellator is never going to take or never going to be considered the number one thing. Why not put on some crazy psycho fights? It's already bad enough that the UFC has CM Punk. I don't think it's bad per se. I think I worded that wrong. I just think that, you know, you're definitely bringing in a guy that does draws and stuff. And it just, it seems unnecessary to have to really think that, you know, everybody that fights for the UFC is doing it to fight for a belt. I don't think that there needs to be. I mean, let's like we'll, we'll do this later on in the fight, but let's actually talk about this new card, and I'll get back to my point. Um, UFC 186, you said this was. Yeah, 186 going down in Canada. Oh, it's going down in Canada. Whoa. Where in Canada? Um. One sec. I want to say Montreal. Montreal, Canada. Yeah. Cool. I think it's the Air Canada Center, maybe? I can't remember. Oh, cool. That's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good place to spot. I, mean, I don't fucking know my, um, like, I'm going to sound like a fucking idiot right now, but, like, if, if, you, if a map of Canada was right in front of me, I couldn't fucking tell you what's where. Yeah, no, I mean, well, it's you're American. Canada. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah. It's going down to Canada. You can fucking, anyone listening to this can look it up. Sorry, Canadians, if I insulted you with that. And, <laughs> But that's cool. Okay, so TJ Dillashaw versus Hannah Burrell too makes sense since you know uh, Rafael and and uh, and uh, what's his name Dominic Cruz are out. By the way, for anybody, I need to apologize again for ruining the bantamweight division by jinxing it as bad as I did. <laughs> but that makes sense strictly because who else is going to fight other than Faber? But at the same time, you know I think. Uh, there's a better place for that fight to be made. Um, plus, the rematch is still a, a, a fight people might want to see. Maybe not as much so when it was going to go down at 177, but hopefully if they promote it right, um, it'd be interesting to see. Oh, definitely. I still see Dillashaw winning, but... I I love Burrell to death. I really... I know you do, and you don't like Dillashaw. We're on the opposite fence of this, I know. I mean, getting really <laughs> down into it... Nothing Burrell did against Gagnon has really shown me, oh man, he looks fairly improved, or he looks like he's adjusted this, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't... I'm back, I'm definitely backing Burrell, 100%, but I don't see anything he's necessarily changed to combat what Dillashaw brought to the table. Yeah, he came out like a frozen chicken out of the freezer needing to thaw in that fight. He needed to, he needed to really... Yeah, a lot more conservative, not as wild. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Usually I the guy's that's aggressive. The, that's the changes I saw was him being a lot more conservative. I mean, it paid off in the end of the fight. He finished. I don't know if, if like, because there's two ways you could look at it. One that, oh man, he he came out. He needed to really uh get the nerves going and 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 uh and really work out the maybe the rust to a bit to a T. I mean, he is coming off a loss. I mean, the feeling that of that. And going back into the cage can definitely alter your mindset a little. 
Um, and uh, or he was just thinking like, man, I'll just kind of take this uh, as it goes, not be too wild, not get crazy, and then see how I do. And it worked out either way, no matter how you look at it. So, but you know, that's that's the thing, man. It's man, and th I don't see where Hennen has improved in any ways. You're right. That can that that helps him in the fight against Dillashaw. So I'm gonna back Dillashaw. Hector Lombard. Now. We're going to get into this welterweight title picture here. Hector Lombard fighting Rory McDonald, and then you got Johnny Hendricks fighting um, Matt Brown. So now you have two of the, the, the contenders that you were going to have fight Robbie now are going to fight in different fights. That's kind of weird how that played out, huh? Not and, uh, I mean, like I said, Robbie has a much uh, well-deserved rest, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's good to see them fight. It's gonna be exciting for me. I think if Hendricks wins and Rory loses, then Hendricks gets the shot, and the and the other way around. But like, say both of them lose, I would think Hector gets the next shot because Matt's already fought Robbie and lost, um, and Hector beats the number one guy. I think Rory right there, or if Rory's like number two or one under or above Hendricks. You know, um, I'd say he's number one in terms of deserving the shot out of those four, but number two in terms of the rank. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Um, I would say that, yeah, so if Hector beats Rory and then Hendricks loses to Brown, I think Hector should get the next shot. What do you think? I agree. I mean, if uh, if Lombard wins, I'd even say if Lombard wins, Hendricks wins, Lombard deserves the shot. But Really? I could totally see them doing Hendricks uh, Lawler trilogy because it's the Hendricks Lawler trilogy. Yeah, I want to see the Hendricks Lawler trilogy. I want to see that close out. I want to see how that goes. I know people like to say, yeah, you need to spread those out. Why? <laughs> They're the best that they are now. Why not put the best versions of them in there right now? I don't need to see it later. I want to see it now. That's my that's my argument. I don't know. That's... Uh, I mean, my argument holds up the rest of the division. How? He's in the division. What? <laughs> well, I just meant, like, example. the perfect example being, like, uh... Edgar Maynard. There's pl there's other people deserving of the shot right away. Have Hendricks at least fight twice to get back instead. Of well, no, but see, that's I don't think that's the same case here. I think that that was the case when Hendricks was going to immediately get it after the fact. After the fact, you know what I mean? Um, like Roy should have gotten it, and then Hendricks gets a fight, and then gets in there. Now it's Hendricks gets a fight, Roy gets a fight. Um. And I think that if Hendrick and you know Hector, what is he? he only has two wins at welterweight, right? He has Nate and Josh Berkman. Oh no, Jake Shields too, huh? So that's three. And if he wins, that's four. Um. So hmm, I don't know. I, I'd still go with Hendricks. It's the more, it's the the the, the better selling fight, I think. All right. So if Hendricks wins, Rory Mack wins. Who do you think? Ooh, there's that's the conundrum. I think I think it'll be like that that uh, like you know who gets the more impressive victory. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever gets the the win that looks the most stylish. Like you know when Lyoto fought Ryan Bader and and Shogun fought yeah, Brandon Barra. Yeah. Whoever got the more impressive yeah. win got the title shot. You know. Yeah. And um, I think it, if it could go that way, definitely. Which at least on paper they really tried to give that to Shogun. <laughs> I'm sorry. On paper, at least, they really tried to give that to Shogun. Yeah, well, you get you gave him Brandon Vera, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Brandon Vera showed up, man, to that fight. That was a good fight. Uh, and so, yeah, I think if, yeah, whoever wins most impressively, and I think that'll be up to the discretion of the UFC probably more so than the fans, although I think the fans might have some input. But say Hendricks knocks out Matt Brown in like a minute and Roy Mack gets like a, gets like a decision or like a boring decision or something. Then probably Hendricks will get it next. I don't. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just, I was just agreeing. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't really care for Rory, but I, I feel for him in the sense that, yeah, I mean, he's kind of done. He's done some work, you know. He got fucked over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, but that just shows you how stacked welterweight is right now. And then you got guys like Kelvin Gaslam coming up, and you know, uh, what is it, um. You know, Tyron Woodley, Dung Gun Kim, if, like, one of those guys gets on a streak, they could be next following in the next coming years. Yeah, man, the division's <laughs> wide open. What? Rank Rankings-wise, on 
UFC page. You got one Hendricks, two Rory Mack, three Woodley, four Condit, who I can't wait to see come back. Five Lombard, six Brown, seven Gastelum, eight Maya. Yeah, you also have Lombard. I mean, if he loses, he probably goes back in line. But but yeah, I mean, there's just so many possibilities now for that division more so than I think any other division. Um, I can't think of a, of a division with more credible contenders, you know? Um, I mean, especially when you compare it to the champion. If you include the champion in the equation, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that belt play hot potato for the next few years. Yeah, definitely. I mean, between I mean, people said that about middleweight though. With why? Been, I didn't say that. I don't know who said that. If you said that, I you're silly. Said it actually, I, I can't wait. I'm going to UFC 184. See Weidman put a beating on a Brazilian uh, for the third time. <laughs> that I just actually that's a good point. He's fought three Brazilians in a row. Mm -hmm. Anderson, Lyoto, and uh, he's going to fight Vitor next. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, man. I, and he could get another one. I mean, he could get Jacare after this. Yeah, he man. Remember when they lined those pictures up? Anderson, Lyoto, and Jacare, and Vitor. Oh, my God. And then say <laughs> he's gonna, he could feasibly beat them all. Oh, yeah. 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 I said, like, uh, right after he beat Anderson the second time, if he can get through Leoto and get through Vitor, but especially Leoto. I, I was confident enough he beat Vitor after Leoto. But if he can get through Leoto and get through Vitor, I'm confident he'll beat anyone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. those are the real threats. that Next to Jacare, I think Jacare is a real legit threat, uh, um, more so than Luke. Um, I think stylistically, you know, well, probably behind them. Actually, no, I think Weidman can really hang with him. I just think it's... I have to really break that fight yeah, down and just, really watch them, but just thinking about it, I think Weidman can beat Rio. Well. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. I just think that he can still he still has his chance as far as the power and as much as the wrestling. Yeah. Presents a pretty good problem. Oh, for sure. I'm, I just think that if Derek Brunson can, can kind of wrestle with Yoel, Chris could definitely do it. That's the thing with Jacare is that, man, you get that guy to the ground, you're in trouble still no matter what, you know? Yeah. Um, and Weidman would need to really be cautious there. Plus, I mean, Jacare is a very unpredictable striker as well. So it, it really, uh, man, it would be surprising, man. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get somebody to come down. If you can't come down, I'm hoping to get uh, Admin Jonas to come down. Oh, that'd be awesome. From Texas to LA. Yeah. What else we got on the agenda? Was what? Yeah, what other fights? I mean, that's as far as the welterweight picture. What else do you got? What What else was added on this card? Oh shit! Go one sec. Let me uh let's see here. Did I just posted about MMA discussion. What was? Oh, uh, what? Uh, Rampage Maldonado. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's a that's a big big order for Maldonado, and uh. Definitely a fun fight. Yeah. I, wow. For uh, Rampage, if he wins, oh man, would I love to see Silver Rampage. Oh, yes. I mean, I'd love to see just Silver Rampage, Shogun Rampage, Endo Rampage. Mm -hmm. Any of those fights are good. But uh, after that on the card, Bisping versus CB Dalloway. Bisping versus CB. Ah, that's a whatever fight. <laughs> I think it's actually a pretty interesting fight just because it's kind of like. Where does each of these guys hang in the division? Definitely. You know, I mean... Oh, wow, wow. And CB's... Uh -huh. He's got like a weird back and forth record, so does Bisping. Yeah, I mean, well, they're both, what, ranked top 10, which is kind of weird, but... I think it's 9-10, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited for the Fabio Maldonado Rampage fight. I just, I'm excited to see where Rampage stands more than anything. Not on the whole card. I, I think out of the whole card, I am excited to see Dillashaw come back. Um, yeah, it should be a decent card. This is Montreal. Blaze is already messaging us saying, yeah, I'm getting tickets. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. It's Montreal. Yeah, he's close to there, right? <clears throat> I think so. Yeah, isn't he like in that area or like Toronto area? I believe so, yeah. That That's a good card thus far already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. This is going to be... 
back to the point I was making um, about like each division having certain fighters that mm-hmm. can uh, that can you know really stay stay stable as a fighter and fight big name fights mm-hmm. and get the get the good treatment and <laughs> I just saw your message <laughs> um, but yeah just I, I just think that there's a there's fighters like that in every division there really is. Fighters that you know that need to really be honest with themselves, and say, I mean, there it's already you got to be a, a crazy motherfucker to be a fighter anyway. So I can see why certain fighters would just play it in their heads like, no, I'm the best. I am the best. I can go out there. I can fight. I can do this. I can do that. I can mm-hmm. fight for the belt. And then you know, but you, you know, some of us fans uh, will be like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. I mean, it's not even us up to us to judge, but I think like you know, the fighters or the coaches or the family members should be able to say that like, hey. I, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen, man. Mm. You know, there's no reason for them to retire because of that. There's no reason for them to walk away from the sport because you know it's it's almost like a demanding thing that they need to be fighting for the title or they shouldn't even fight anymore. The, like Donald said, the title isn't everything. You c- it can be about mm. just being one of the best fighters out there that was the most exciting to watch that you know the fans love to see. Um, that made some money. You go out. You'd be able to. You'd be able to stay stable for a long period of time after you retire. You know, it doesn't always have to be about the belt. That's the. That's the thing. You know what I mean? I mean, at the end of the day, personally, I think it's all about just money in your bank. Yeah, I mean, if you're a fighter and your skills are so bad that you just can't hang at all with competition anymore, like say you get cut by the UFC and then you go to like a different promotion, and you're still losing. You need to retire. Then it's that. It's a matter of that. It's a matter of just you can't be successful. There has to be some kind of success that falls through with making that money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like if you're Bob Sapp and you have 13 laws in a row, get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, he's the big thing that people were saying was that he's dropping him to make a quick 30 grand or something like that. That's just silly. Don't do that. Don't be a bitch. Don't do, no, that's silly. <laughs> That's just, I mean, if Bob Sapp was going in there and making a decent effort, you know, yeah. and and it was just known to all of us that he wasn't dropping fights and was losing a lot of them, but at least winning some or so every now and again, but making money just off of his name, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not, it's not like he's in a big name corporation. It's not like he's with Bellator or, M- or the UFC or World Series of Fighting. Um, so with that, I, I, you know, I don't think that that was a, a uh, I wouldn't think that that would be a huge deal, but yeah, he was clearly dropping fights. Um, so it's, it's, that that's a different thing. But I think it's absolutely insane that he has managed to beat Ernesto Hoos twice. <laughs> Why you gotta remind me of crazy shit? That right? is just some food for thought. <laughs> that's bad food for thought. It's like ten week guacamole food for thought. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Just let that sink in. He mm. beat Ernesto Hoos twice. Stop. Stop just no. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's bad. But that's just that, those are my thoughts on fighters. Like 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 we could like let's go down the list of the top fifteen of fighters that that uh, you know like let's start at bantamweight because I don't I think flyweight is still too new of a division to really say that about right now. Or you go with fighters that just make fun fights. Yeah. Uriah Faber is one that immediately comes to mind at 135, even though, I mean, it's it's a weird conundrum because he easily beats everybody that isn't, like, top five. Oh, but like I said, bounce back between 35-45. Uh, yeah, he could easily fight at 145, have some fun fights. Say, like, Frankie Edgar fights Jose Aldo for the title, loses again, and then Jose just stays the champion for a long period of time. Frankie's immediately on that list for me of guys that don't need to be fighting for the belt, and could just have fun fights, make some good money. You know what I mean? Looking at 45, but still a guy that's in that um, area. I would say Clay Guida. Clay Guida versus Uriah Faber. Yeah. Clay, haven't they fought before? Maybe. Yeah, look that up. I think they have. I think it was for, like, King of the Cage. Let me Google that. Which, what was Clay Guida's last fight for Midas? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Actually. Yeah, it was Bermuda. It's yeah, okay. I don't know. It's weird. I feel like he, I thought he fought somebody else recently. I'm tripping. But yeah, off the top of my head, at Bantamweight, let's look at the top. I'll look it up now. Top 15 of every division, which I still think it's silly that they do top 15, but whatever. Oh, no, he hasn't fought your favorite. 
He hasn't. All right. Yeah, Damn. that could be a yeah, that could be a match. I mean, that could be like a. I mean, a lot of people would say it doesn't make sense, but you know, with Uriah Faber, a guy who's lost what seven or six fucking title fights in the UFC and WC straight, right? Something like that, yeah. Something crazy. Mm mm. Can't be doing that. Mm mm. Needs to stop. You don't need to always be fighting for the belt. It's clear he can beat anybody outside the top five of any division. Uh, that he fights in, you know, and possibly the top five too, but never the champion. That's just always been his deal, and I don't know why. It's just it's a, a problem with him. I think that, you know, him versus, like, say, Frankie Edgar, should Frankie fight uh, Aldo and lose, that'd be an awesome fight. I would love to watch that. I, I mean, I remember I was calling for that before. I'm sure there's other fights that he could do. He could still close out that trilogy with Cruz. Um... There's all kinds of things left open. And, uh, I mean, that, that was when he lost all the first time. People were saying maybe he should drop the bantamweight because I think his boxing coach said he could drop the bantamweight. Oh, Frankie? Definitely. Um, uh, I don't know. If you should... I don't think he should fight for the title, but, like, say, like, Hennon loses again to Dillashaw and then Frankie drops down. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that would be interesting. Or him versus Dominic Cruz. Should uh, Dominic Cruz come back and then lose the belt, or if he becomes a champion, then D TJ Dillashaw versus Frank Yeager. You know, there's all kinds of fun fights like that. Uh, looking around lightweight, I mean, I don't think this is a guy that's necessarily in that zone to where it's all about making the fun fights, but I know he has that attitude, Donald Cerrone. <laughs> Say that again? Donald Cerrone is the type of guy that has the attitude. That to just bounce around and have fun fights. I mean, honestly, I think he'd have some fun fights at welterweight. Oh, definitely. Him yeah. versus Matt Brown. Can you imagine in Colorado? <laughs> oh man, we oh see that's the thing is that I don't know if it was you that was talking about this, but yeah, it was. And you yeah, had, Donald Cerrone <laughs> took the fight that he's fighting Benson Henderson on in two weeks' notice. But man, I would have loved it if he took on Matt Brown because can you imagine? First of all, Donald's actually taller than Matt Brown. Could you imagine the violence that would have been presented in that fight? The mean mugging and the stare downs, and then just the the, the <laughs> he already changed that altitude. Cerrone wouldn't have had a problem make, taking a five round fight in Colorado. I think he I think he lives he used to live there in Colorado. I think so. Yeah, and then, um, oh man, that fight would have been great. <laughs> Donald would have made a payday too, more so that fight than I think this one with Henderson. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's look at uh let's look at lightweight. Let's see, like Takanori Gomi is another one of those guys on the list that could just have those fun fights. Mm -hmm. You know. Like a fight against Isaac Valley Flag, that was a great fight. Yeah, man. It, he doesn't need to be fighting top ranked guys. Not not now. I mean, if he thinks he needs to be fighting top ranked guys right now, he's he's tripping. Cause Josh he Thompson, that'd be another good one. Yeah, Josh Thompson Takanori Gomi. That should be a fight that they should make next. Former Pride champ versus former Strike Force champ is pretty dope. Yeah, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Give me, go ahead and look through that. Give me one second, cause I actually have to use the restroom right now, real quick. Uh, Nate Diaz, that'd be another good guy that that you could put up for uh, interesting fights. I mean. Oh yeah, I mean he's kind of not to say he's falling off, but man, it just doesn't seem like when he fights the top dudes, he can't really get it done, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. as of late, I mean, it's just kind of looked like he's been more lax lately. I mean, he had that period where he was very on. He took out Cerrone. He took out Miller. But then, I don't know, he has his slumps or his moments where he just doesn't seem as focused, as driven. Yeah. I think if I think Josh Koscheck, if he beats Jake Ellenberger, is another one of those guys. He's never fighting for the belt again. Oh, yeah. But if he wins and stays in the UFC and still wants to fight, that's another guy that needs to just admit that he's not fighting for the belt again needs to have some fun fights. Well, being a Fox analyst, I'm pretty sure he's sticking with the UFC, no matter what. Koscheck's a Fox analyst? Yeah. I've never seen him. What? He's popped up occasionally. Occasionally? Yeah. Yeah. At middleweight, of course, you have Anderson Silva, possibly Lyoto, should he lose to Wyden one more time. Um... I'd love to see like uh like you know Leoto and Rashad rematch at 185 or you know sick. or Silva and Rashad. I've been wanting to see that for a while because I think Rashad honestly should think about middleweight. Yeah, uh, or or Silva and Rashad, no, no matter the division. Oh, that's another good. That's another fight we mentioned to uh, uh, last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
who else? And then light heavyweight. Of course, you have a bunch, actually. You have, like, Dan Henderson and Shogun and Rampage and mostly Pride veteran. Little Noguera. Those are a lot of guys that could just be making fun fights. Mm-hmm. Of course, Rashad. Um I I don't you know I just personally don't see him. Of course, heavyweight has those two. Junior Dos Santos, but like he's a there's an asterisk there because like say if anybody else was champion he'd be a contender. Oh yeah. Um, let's look at heavyweight. Um, at heavyweight, like you mentioned, Junior Dos Santos but with an asterisk because I mean really it's it's kind of like the GSP John Pitch situation, the perennial number two, sadly. Yeah. But still looking at heavyweight, I mean. I think, like, Junior Dos Santos and Alistair Overeem could definitely, like, headline a Fox card or come in a pay-per-view or something like that. Because Alistair is 3-3 three three right now. He's not he's not near a title shot right now. I mean, the division is shallow, so you never know. But um, I just think that that's, like, especially if Alistair beat Junior, I think that he'd be in, like, a, in like you know, a, a much he, – he'd be definitely in the mix after that. But – I just think that right now they should just be looking for good fights that get him good money. Alistair already gets paid a mega bank for every fight he's in, ridiculously enough as it is. He makes nearly 400, I think. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. It's a very odd number. I think it's like 363,000 something. <laughs> like, it's weird. In the world? Yeah. Yeah, like or or you know, like like Alistair and Mark Hunt rematch, or Mark Hunt and Josh... Josh... Uh, Josh? Josh... <laughs> Josh Barnett, you know how we were hoping he'd come back. Oh, like, uh, as far as Mark Hunt's concerned, he could still fight for a title though. So I mean, I, like, like fans are are hearing us talk, and we're like, they could still fight for the title for one day. Yeah, yeah, it's possible, but at the same time, it's also kind of not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That we're going by hypotheticals here, so that no one, so anybody listening to this, going like, that's my favorite fighter. He could still fight for the belt one day. Yeah, yeah. It's also very possible that they won't ever fight for the belt one day. So that's why we bring this up. So just so nobody gets mad at us about like, oh, you're talking shit about all these fighters saying they won't ever fight for the belt again. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it's very possible that they won't. Um, Frank Mir. <laughs> yeah, Frank Mir is definitely in that boat. Okay, he will never fight for the belt again. <laughs> he lo- He hasn't had a win. 2011. Ugh, yeah, when he broke Ar- No Gear's arm. That was his last win. Yeah, and that's... Even that I love Frank Mayer. God bless him, but... Mm-mm, never fight for the belt. that arm break, he wasn't looking amazing. Nah, I think if he beats Bigfoot here, he needs to look at some highlight fights as well. I think, like, him and Stefan Struve would be fun. Oh, yeah, I think so. That's more of a fight where Frank Mayer is, like, it's a big fight for Frank... Like, just to get some money on. But for Struve, because Struve is still young, he's still in his 20s, he could still... That'd be a big fight win for him, and then he keep, and then he can move, keep moving forward, move on up, possibly get a title shot someday. Frank Mears, to me, is in that boat of a guy who's never going to fight for the belt again. Unless, somehow, you know, he sells his soul to the double and just wins every fight moving forward, and then they have to give him one. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. see that happening, though. Wasn't it um, UFC 146 that was supposed to be... JDS versus Reem, and I believe Kane versus Mir. Yeah, oh man. Could you imagine? Oh. And you saw what Kane did to Bigfoot. Man, can you imagine what would have happened to Frank Mir? I don't even think he would have fought those next three fights. Bigfoot versus uh, Roy Nelson was actually supposed to what, what was supposed to go down too, and that would have been a fun fight. Oh uh, yeah, and then he took on Dave Herman or something like that, and then knocked him out in like a minute. Yeah, that, that change up to that whole card was kind of crazy, even though it was still a great card. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Alistair... Oh, the reason why Alistair pulled out is because he tested positive for uh, like high doses of testosterone, right? Yeah, he failed his uh, his random drug test yep. with high uh, sea levels. Silly bitch. How dare you, Alistair? That would have been a great fight. But now, I mean, I think the setting is now to make that fight, even though Alistair and Roy Nelson are fighting next, so... Oh, man. That, that's a real fun fight, too. Oh, yeah, Definitely. Roy Nelson is never really out of those talks only because like he never loses too many in a row. I think he lost to DC and Steep in a row, so now he's kind of getting there. If he loses this fight, I think he's there. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, it's DC and Steep, so... Yeah, exactly. And Steep is not number nine. We talked about this earlier. He's not number nine. He's like number four or three right now. It's ridiculous uh, to think he's anything else. I mean, UFC has him at four behind Travis Brown. That makes Jessica. sense. See, I agree with that. Yeah, but see that. Like, yeah, see this. All of these divisions have all these fights, and also another announcement that we haven't even touched on is the Kimbo Sai signing. Oh damn! 
Yeah, like I said it earlier, like I brought it up, but we didn't even talk about it. Yeah, Kimbo Slice signed with Bellator MMA. Now, I think a lot of people are bitching about it. You know, that's that's fine. But at the same time, it goes in with, with what I was saying. And I mentioned it earlier that, you know, Kimbo still wants to fight. He feels like he's got a lot to offer in the world of combat sports. So let him. What's wrong? It's just just because you think he sucks doesn't mean he thinks he sucks, okay? All together in MMA and combat sports in general, he's 11-2. and two. Uh, to some people, that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, that, I mean he's seven and zero in boxing and he's four and two in MMA. Not bad. Okay, especially for an MMA record, four and two. That's like you know that's pretty average. That's pretty decent. Like if he's two and four, then I'd agree with you maybe, but it's not the case. Um, I think he should have stayed in boxing, but he certainly wasn't making the kind of money in boxing. I was paying attention to his boxing career because I wanted to see how he was doing. He he had like he has seven wins straight in in boxing six knockouts they all look really good he's actually pretty fast with his hands his footwork is pretty slow but he, he has fast hands um and uh he his boxing looked great i think he would have made a real impact in it if he had stayed patient and disciplined and stayed in boxing but he is he is approaching 40 i believe and um and so he felt okay mma is gonna pay me more why not just do that why not just do that I mean, again, it's not like he's going there to become their champion. If if Kimbo really believes he's going to the Bellator MMA to become their champion, then he's a little delusional. Only in the sense that, you know, a, a lot of fighters that think that they are going to fight for the belt are. Anyway, they kind of have to be. So it's not like I can dock him for, being, for saying that if he does say that. I don't think that's why he's there, though. I think he's there to make some big money fights. Fight like Bonner or Tito or even, like, you know, some light heavyweights maybe, like King Mo or something. I don't know. Um, that that's just those are the kind of fights that he can have. I mean, you know, I mean, there's there's a division, and then there's just these guys that are there that that are, have name value that you can make some money off of. You know what I mean? And Kimbo is on that list of guys you can make some money off of. And oh, yeah, I mean, that's what Bellator seems to be really pushing for. That's not necessarily there's nothing wrong with that. They're talking about what signing Mirko Krokop now. Oh yeah, I was just about to mention that. Which mm -hmm. him versus Kimbo? Okay, yeah, sign that up. And, I mean, they're talking about Manhope. Oh, Crow Cop versus Kimbo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sign that up. And Man that would be awesome. Manhope versus Shlomenko. That's a great fight. Now, what I wouldn't want is is for them to say, like, if they did a card, like, if they put them, like, Mirko and, Crow, Mirko and, and, and Slice on a card to headline it, I don't want it to be over a title fight. I didn't like that Tito and Bonner was above a, a, a title okay. fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't like that Bellator does that, but if like they're gonna put like a random card on where they're trying to build up contenders, and then you have this crazy fight like Krokop Kro versus Slice on there, that'd be awesome. That's great. Let's bring the fans in, make us all watch. You're getting us hooked onto all your prospects and all your guys that are gonna fight for the belt and everything. That's that's a good plan. I like that plan. That's pretty good. I think I think we just solved like 20% of Bellator's issues. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I, this is just me, man. But like I said, there's, there's, it, I love, I love a lot of fighters, and some of them, you know, I, I can be honest and say when their time has passed. Shogun Hua, his time has passed. Put him in some fun fights, get him going. Maybe go down to middleweight. Why not fight some? I don't. If he wants to do that, let him do that. I, I just think that we need to halt a little bit on t telling fighters that they need to retire when it's not on their minds. If, you know, if it is on their minds, then, you know, more power to them for, for them to be doing that. Uh, yeah, I firmly believe that if a fighter can prosper somewhere else or if a fighter can prosper just by, you know, maybe not so much go after the title, but just having these big name or big fun fights that people want to see, why the hell not? I mean, it's your career. You're making money off of it. You're putting food on the table. You're getting what you want. Why not? Yeah, and it's, it's always going to be, too, you got to think. I know people are going to say, oh, he's not fighting for the title anymore. He's just taking these crazy fights. That doesn't mean they suck, all right? You can't be saying, like, oh, he sucks now, you know, so it's no reason to watch him. No, they're still the fighter that they are. You know, like, Vanderlei Silva is a perfect example. People would still watch Vanderlei Silva. They know he's never going to fight for a belt, but he knows that people want to watch him fight. So he's going to fight whoever he has to fight. And then they're gonna put you know money down to watch him. You know what I mean? No matter what, he's a perfect example. And I think 
that all fighters are like that in a, in a sense if they can build their careers to that moment. I think every fighter that's like in the game right now still building their name, they should be worried about, you know, fighting for a title or, or, or you know, driving themselves for a certain goal like that right now. I'm talking specifically about fighters that have been in the game a while, fought for the belt, lost the belt, or just never won the belt, or and you know maybe they want to get back to it, and they just and it's just maybe too far of a goal maybe at this point. Um, I'm talking about those guys. I'm not talking about like newcomers or guys that are still in the game like midway through their career. You know, I'm talking about guys nearing the end. You know what I mean? But still have skill to really be successful. Still, you know, still go out there and win fights. Like Rampage is that guy. Who was that guy? Faber is definitely that guy. Um, you know, Junior's, as I said, the asterisk is there. But Josh Barnett's that guy. Mark Hunt's that guy. Those guys are all available for for fights that make it, you know, be fun to watch. You know I, what mean, I mean, soon enough, you look at all of our champions right now, there's going to be a day that comes where they'll be in this predicament too. Exactly, you know what I mean? And what are you going to do? I mean, you're a fucking Robbie Lawler fan one second. And then a few years passes by, and he might be in that boat. There could like, be oh. fighters that pull that off. Yeah. If a, if fighters, if a fighter really can pull that off, he should be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> if a, a fighter can pull a Robbie Lawler with their career and make a resurgence like that, then then do that. Anderson Silva could definitely still do that. He could win a few more fights right now at middleweight. I feel like that's what we feel should be should happen. Like he should get a few more fights in middleweight and then work his way back to the belt. He could definitely do that. Definitely. I'm not saying he shouldn't, but I'm also saying that that's another alley that he could take with his career. He was the champion for God almost a, like what eight years now? Eight like, years, close to nine, I believe. Two thousand six, I think he got the belt. Yeah, something wild, you know. So. I you know it's a matter of whatever they want to do with their careers. I think that that was that's been the majority of what we talked about this whole podcast. Yeah. But it's just something that fans don't ever talk about. They talk more about oh this guy sucks now, so he should retire. No, he should just fight some other guys that are around the same level as him and make some make a fun fight out of it. Make a make a good show. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. I, I've never There's thought. Lots of fighters that maybe they they can't really crack into getting the title or getting the title shot, but they certainly don't suck. I mean, no. you just look through this um, rankings report right here on UFC, and there's tons of guys that probably won't even get the title shot, but certainly don't suck at all. I mean, mm -mm. guys like Francisco Rivera don't suck. Guys like... You did really well against um, Faber. I really hope to see that rematch. Oh, yeah, definitely. Guys like Dong Young Kim certainly don't suck. I mean, there's tons of people that are, you know, they can still put on great fights, and just because they're probably won't fight for the title, they they're certainly not horrible. Yeah, I wouldn't say Dong Young Kim is a guy who I would put in that list yet, only because he still, I mean, just because he lost to Woodley doesn't mean he can't make a resurgence and come back and fight for the belt. I think guys like like maybe Condit, even though Condit's still a very skilled fighter, but he did I lose two in a row, or he's lost like three in his last four. Oh yeah, I love Condit, but thinking about it now. He, I thought he could be in that boat too, where it's all about making the fun fights. Yeah, like yeah. say he comes back, he loses another one. I think he should just take like, take take a take another fight that doesn't have any like ranking implications, and then uh and then see where he's at, especially coming off an injury. If he comes yeah, like Ellenberger wins, he comes back to Ellenberger. That'd be a good fight. Yeah, that that I've been wanting to see that rematch too. Um. Yeah, I think we've touched that on that enough, and it's been a. Yeah. It's been, I think with that we'll close off. It's been a good podcast. I mean, we got, we got to just shoot the shit more than anything. This is more fun. I'd rather do this more often than having to do our little <laughs> formal things. This is fun, so I think we'll do this more often, and uh, it's better one on one. If there was three of us, it'd be fun too. But we'll see how that goes if we ever do. We will be coming back. Uh, Tuesday with our a formal podcast. Uh, my host Chris Pagliuca will be with us, and we will discuss UFC Fight Night 59, McGregor versus Seaver. Everybody's going to be watching that. Enjoy the fights. The fights are the, the card overall. I, I bet will deliver. We might also preview UFC on Fox 14 going down 24th January 24th. I can't wait. That's I'm oh man, that's gonna be great. With that, fight fans, uh, we close out. Please, if you guys don't have Stitcher yet, get the app. You only got to sign in, make an, make an account kind of like what you do in Pandora, and then you can just uh, look for us, MMA Discussion, no S at the end, and, uh, and we're available free 
on, on Stitcher. We're also available free on iTunes. So you can just subscribe. I know that takes more data out of your phone, so Stitcher is probably the better way to go. Um, please uh, check out all our sponsors, MMAprofit.com, SubmissionFC.com. Check out the website, MMA, or um, uh, SportsOfAnarchy.com. Also, of course, because of where else would we be, MMA discussion on Facebook page. Please give us a like, share it, spread it. We're always on there. Uh, please send us any messages, questions you'd like to ask us. We're always down to just talk. We don't really care. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. And Chris, sign off. Thank you very much for having me again. Until next time, you guys have a week. Till next time. Later, man. <laughs>